Getting into chapter 1108 of One Piece called Attention World, it starts off with a view of the island from the marine ships as the wreckages keep piling up. Then we move on to where Karabo is, groveling in front of Van Alga and Katarina Devon. Alga points his gun at him and questions why he's on a government island and that there are people after Blackbeard's life. Karabu desperately states that they've got it all wrong and if they kill him, then Blackbeard will have their heads. Van Alga asks why and Karabu confirms that he has some extremely valuable information that's really hard to come by. Karabu thinks to himself about the amount of information he possesses, which is information about the ancient weapons including Princess Shirahoshi and Pluton under Wano, which are only known by the Straw Hat crew and himself. He begs them again, saying he'll give the information free of charge and that they can trust him. Olga and Katarina do seem to consider it. But before we get into the rest of the chapter, if you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe, it really helps my small channel grow. Also, I've made a Patreon and it's in the description below. Support me if you'd like. Back with the Marines, they're again trying to pull away from the island as their assault on the pacifistas doesn't seem to be working. They even have bubble shields that stop the cannon fire, which the Marines are in dismay at being used against them. The pacifistas continue to fire and we get a good look at the other vice admirals as they become more and more frustrated about the situation. Bluegrass states she can't cut loose and Hound suggests calling off the buster call, but Guillotine says there's no way since Vegapunk gave a pirate the authority chip. They all think that Vegapunk is now a rebel and plan to get the pacifistas back on their side, which does mean killing Bonnie. Doberman commands them to all leave their stations and hunt her down, continuing that her escape route will lead her to the northeast coast. Vice Admiral Tosa is already in pursuit and manages to spot them running away. He turns on his armament hacky and aims to rip them all open. He shouts Tosa Crunch and is about to grab Bonnie on Frankie's back. But suddenly a shadow appears over them and is smashed into the ground by a giant axe. Bonnie looks up and screams and Frankie and Atlas are surprised at the fact that there are giants on the island questioning if they're also enemies. And of course, it turns out to be Dorian Broggy, who exclaimed that they checked the bounty posters to make sure that they could recognize any new members of the Straw Hat crew. But they're unsure about the researchers and say that they're here to collect the crew. And Frankie jumps in, confirming that Luffy is indeed his captain, but asks if they've got a grudge against him. Which is just hilarious, because Frankie is always immediately jumping into action to defend Luffy, no matter what. He's certainly one of the most loyal crew members, even if it gets him into trouble sometimes. Broggy states that it's nothing like that. They've only got gratitude for Luffy, and Dory adds that they're warriors from Elbaf. If they're friends of Luffy, then they'll protect them all. Bonnie then shouts asking if they can help Luffy, Sanji and Vegapunk who were left behind. Broggy has a twinge of nostalgia from those names and agrees to Bonnie's request. And Dory asks Broggy if Vegapunk is the name that scholar mentioned. Hmm, I wonder which scholar that could be. Some of the crewmate giants are ordered to carry the group to the ships and Dory and Broggy aim to continue on further, helping when they can. And Frankie, who hasn't met any of the giants as of yet, asks if they're the masters Usopp goes on about. Now back with the marines, Vice Admiral Urban states that the phone line has gone dead and another marine, Pomsky, asks if they counterattacked or if it was the giants. Bluegrass orders Vice Admiral Dole to jump on one of the robot sea beasts and get to the island as quickly as possible. They comment on the fact that their luck has dropped since the giants have arrived. Doll says her commanding officer from 20 years ago was a giant and Bluegrass notes that she must be talking about Saul, who was the giant vice admiral that saved Nico Robin from the destruction of her homeland. And I'm sure him being brought up as many times as he has in this chapter will probably play a major role down the line. Back with the escaped group, the giant carrying them asks where the others are and Bonnie says that they're in the lab above the clouds. The giants wonder if it's a sky island, but she states it's not exactly, just right above them. Now moving on to the main fight, Saturn slowly moves closer to Luffy, Sanji and Vegapunk as Luffy tries to save him. Vegapunk states that if they try to move him then he'll die from hemorrhaging and Luffy continues to say that they made a promise to him so they have to get him off the island. Vegapunk however believes he's made his bed. And Saturn with this absolutely terrifying demonic face charges towards them from the distance. And geez, this is actually nightmare fuel. This is a new paralysis demon that has dropped. 
Vegapunk warily exclaims he was hoping that Bonnie's authority chip would have remained a secret until she was older, since now she'll be a target for the rest of her life and asks Luffy to look after her. Sanji comments on how inhuman Saturn looks now in his anger, seeming to also be coated in a venom that melts anything it touches. Out of nowhere, Saturn suddenly attacks, slithering his feet towards them and crushing everything in its path. Sanji uses his observation hacky to tell Luffy to dodge while grabbing Vegapunk from the floor. Luffy effortlessly evades, jumping around in the air and tells Sanji to continue taking Vegapunk far away from here. Vegapunk screams in pain telling Sanji to leave him behind but Sanji tells him no and that they'll figure something out. Suddenly Kizaru appears and kicks Sanji in the face before creating his sword and piercing Vegapunk again through the stomach. Jeez, can this guy take a break? He's been impaled twice already. Luffy and Sanji scream Vegapunk's name whilst Kizaru stands there in dismay. Luffy then quickly tells Sanji to continue what he was doing and Sanji picks up Vegapunk again, apologizing to him for letting that happen. Kizaru aims to go after them again, but suddenly him and Saturn are both stopped in their tracks by Luffy, who doesn't look joyous or anything like his Giggly Gear 5 self. Instead, he's looking serious now as he grabs Kizaru in one hand and holds onto Saturn in the other. And I have to say, he genuinely looks like a god in this panel. Someone with genuine overwhelming power that has someone at the highest seat of power in his grasp. Luffy then states that there's no way he's letting them both escape with this creepy evil smile. And while Luffy stands there in the distance in giant form, Sanji tells Vegapunk not to die, but instead, Vegapunk seems to smile and then turns a button on. What he turned on then connects to a broadcast receiver and Vegapunk's face appears on a far away monitor. It seems to be a past recording and this Vegapunk tests the microphone then addresses the entire world. Vegapunk introduces himself and explains that this message will come as a shock to everyone who hears it. What he's about to tell them is the truth about the world. And the chapter ends there with another insane cliffhanger. This time it seems though in Vegapunk's last dying action will be to reveal the truth about the world. And I mean, we've been waiting for this for decades. This is the final moment where the entire world was flipped on its head and the secrets the world government have been trying to keep a secret may be revealed. I really do hope that this isn't actually Vegapunk's last words. It would be an unbearable shame, but it definitely still would mark this arc as one of the best. It's now coming to the end of the video and I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I'm so happy you stopped by. My channel is steadily growing and I'm amazed at the support I'm getting. And I also have a Patreon now, so feel free to support me however you like. The link will be in the description and I will shout out names at the end of each video. Thank you again. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.